there priceless items in your attic? Your average home did not have this kind of furniture. Do you have any old letters that may be rare collectibles? Out of everything in the house that you've shown me, this, this is the most significant. American homes are filled with treasures, and antique expert Jimmy Schutz is knocking on doors to bring these items to you. He is the treasure hunter. Hi, I'm Jimmy Schutz. In the antique business, I'm known as a picker. For the past 24 years, I've been getting into the most incredible homes, finding the most unbelievable treasures. There was a time I found 80 Civil War letters in the trunk of a lady's attic. There was a $30,000 signed stickly table I found at a household sale in Pennsylvania. Now you can join Jimmy on his treasure hunts, and you can own the unique and valuable collectibles he discovers in the farmhouses, attics, and barns of small-town America. On the internet, just log on to treasurehunter.com. To bid, you'll be asked to register and give a username and password to keep all your information safe. Then you can place your bid and hit submit. It's that easy. When you're the highest bidder, you'll be able to take home one of Jimmy's uncovered treasures. Today's treasure hunt starts in Elmira, a small town in upstate New York. It's a community rich in history. The study where Mark Twain wrote Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer is preserved here. At the turn of the 19th century, Elmira was one of the most prosperous towns in New York. The home of Mr. B, grandson of one of Elmira's most distinguished businessmen, is Jimmy's first stop. I'm glad you let me into your house today, because you have, without a doubt, the most interesting, exciting things I've ever seen. Mr. B inherited family heirlooms purchased by his grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a businessman. He founded his own company back about 1890, and he eventually developed over 300 products, and he had agents all over the United States selling them. As a child, Mr. B remembers how the industrious old man loved collecting beautiful objects. When I was six years old, I thought I'd stump him. I said, Granddad, what do you look for if you don't know so much about a particular field of antiques? He said, I just lo I look for workmanship. The first item up for bid is a good example of skilled craftsmanship. It's a console-based etagere made in New York City in 1860 by Thomas Brooks. If you notice, you've got all the mirrors down here, loaded with mirrors, and you've had your fine china and so forth still here. But all the Rococo is heavily carved wood, the center carving right here with your flowers. This is all hand carved. But the best thing about this whole piece is this shell, domed, concave carved cartouche, really, is what this also is. This is pure Brooks. You'll find other Brooks pieces like this. They're not going to have a label, but there's been enough of these pieces seen and on the market for attribution. We know by the style that's Brooks. Now, naturally, we can't move this out to look, but if you had a Brooks label on the back of this, you'd have something I've never seen the likes of. Mm. Not saying it can't, it may. And a label on this could add $5,000 to the value of this piece. Several of the carved aprons appear missing, and the finial at the top of the 10-foot high at Agere needs to be reattached. But the carvings, the shelves, the mirrors, everything seems to be intact and fine. You have the original finish. It's not yes. hazmat monkey, the hazmat refinery. This is where you want to find them. But I think you have a piece that could hit $20,000 if we have these two little pieces. If not, maybe $500, $800 less for restoration work. Jimmy later found that the etagere was signed by Thomas Brooks and discovered the missing carved aprons. To learn more about the etagere and to place your bid, log on to treasurehunter.com. The etagere held other treasures as well. It's French, and it's under what we call under a dome. We have a clock that's done in marble. You have a porcelain face, little gourd armolu hands, and it has a maker's name on the dial, if I may open this. It's Davis and Collimore and Company, New York, and we're 3rd Avenue and 57th Street. 
They're not the makers. This would be a French maker. But this Davis and Collimore would be the retailer. The style clock, this should be dating about 1850. This is in a high style. Again, would be in the best of homes. You didn't find this in an old farmhouse. This was always in a city. Um, people by means. But we have the finials. They're urn shaped with a drape. You have the drape flower coming through. You've got the cupid with a torch. And again, just all the original gold. I mean, it's untouched just the way you want to find them. This clock here easily would bring 4000 but I think you can be talking as much as $6,000. This French gold-trimmed marble clock from the 1860s and a set of colorful hand-painted beer glasses were also found on Mr. B's at Ager. If you'd like more information on these and other items, log on now to treasurehunter.com. Coming up, some antique woodwork gets Jimmy excited, and there's a grandfather clock that rings his chime and a piece of the nation's history. Today, treasure hunter Jimmy Schatz is in Elmira, New York. He's finding American and French antiques at the home of Mr. B, grandson of a turn-of-the-century businessman. As a picker in the antique business, I look at the exterior of a house first. I ask myself a few questions. Is it old? Are there some unusual features? Unique craftsmanship? For example, an historic plaque is an instant giveaway that there may be treasures inside. The exterior of Mr. B's house gave me those clues. Inside, Jimmy found an exquisite pair of American ladderback chairs dating to 1780. These are very high. You're going to have a ladderback chair. We're talking one, two, three, four, five slats. Run your hand. Look at the workmanship. Look how thin these slats are. It's all out of hickory. You have the original splint seats. I bet you don't know what really excites me about these chairs the most. What would that be? What I love are these turnings. Whenever you're looking at American furniture, these are wild, I mean wild, bulbous turnings. This took imagination. The man that was making this chair, I mean, instead of a simple turn, he could have done this. He could have done a more simple turning along here, but no. He saw this chair, big bulbous. This makes a whole chair. Without this here, they're entirely different. They don't have the charm. They don't have that, that pizzazz. This pair of American ladderback chairs is on the auction block. To place your bid, log on to treasurehunter.com.